today we are going to talk about the different types of stages. While you follow along, make sure you're taking notes in the Google Classroom Notes Sheet so you can get full credit for today. So, the four different types of stages we're going to talk about are the proscenium stage, the traverse stage, the thrust stage, and the in the round stage. The proscenium stage looks like this. This is the most common type of stage, like the type of stage we have at Melrose Veterans Memorial Middle School. First thing to notice is that the house faces the stage. The house is where the audience sits, and there is only one place for the audience to sit directly facing the stage. On either side of the stage, behind the curtains, you will see the wings. This is on the right or left of the stage and is where the techies or the actors wait to go on stage and do their jobs. Down in the front of the stage is called the apron. This is the part of the stage closest to the audience. So this is called a proscenium stage because the curtain frames the stage like a proscenium, and if we wanted to fill it in to give it the fourth side of a frame, like a picture frame, that's where the proscenium line would be. The proscenium line is right here, and it's where we would finish a frame of the stage. Make sure you've labeled all parts of the stage in your picture on your notes. Here's some new vocab that we just saw. The house is where the audience sits. The wings are backstage, immediately off stage, the left and the right. You only wait here when you're about to go on stage or you could be in someone's way. The proscenium arch is the arch framing the opening between the stage and the auditorium, right where the curtain is. And the apron is the part of the stage closest to the audience. Here are some examples of a proscenium stage from Spongebob the Musical, Matilda the Musical, and Frozen the Musical. We can see that the set might come out a little bit into the audience but the biggest part is that the audience is directly facing the stage and the audience and the stage are separate. The audience is not directly a part of the show. More information on proscenium stages. Usually there's a curtain separating the stage and the audience. It allows for really big complex sets and a lot of set changes in large casts since the set is so big. And the audience feels separate from the action, making it easier for an actor to feel separate from this audience and perform more naturally. The next type of stage we're going to talk about is the traverse stage. Make sure you draw this in your notes or your blue notebook. What's important to notice about the traverse stage is that there's the audience on two sides of the stage, directly across from each other. Take a second and think, what does this look like that isn't normally a theater stage? If you guessed a runway for a fashion show, you'd be right. This is the type of stage that we use for that because it allows two different perspectives to see what's going on on the stage. Oklahoma from the 2018 Off-Broadway Revival is an example of this. The audience sat on either side of the stage and it allowed it for it to be an immersive style show where the front row audience got to actually be a part of the show and eat dinner with the cast. Immersive theater, which is a word I just used, is theater where the audience feels as if they're a part of the show or the play, either through the setting, meaning they're physically on the stage in a part of the world, or through participating, whether they're speaking, moving, or in this case, eating with the actors, right? So the audience is a part of the show in some way, and traverse stages help with that feeling. More information is that you can have various scenes going on at one time. It's easy to move from one scene to another if they're all in different parts along the runway. You can see the other audience's reactions, but your set needs to be at a low level so that you don't block an audience's view. So you need to have small set pieces, just like tables and chairs, nothing too big. And the best place to stand here is at the end of the stage because that's where everybody can see perfectly. The third type of stage we are going to talk about is the thrust stage. Make sure you draw this in your notes. What's important to note about this is that there's an audience on three sides of the stage there, there, and there. So it can look like a normal proscenium stage as you see here with a small extension into the audience or it could just be this extension part here. The main part to notice is that there's an audience on three sides of the stage rather than just one side or two sides. Here are some other examples of thrust stages. Here we see there's no proscenium aspect, right? It's just the stage surrounded by those three audiences. Here we have the wings in the back, so we have a little bit of a proscenium land, but it's mostly just the thrust. This is one where you see the proscenium here, 
and then the thrust into the audience, take a second and pause and think. This type of stage, what does it look like? What type of activity would we normally see on this type of stage? If you guessed a concert, you were right. This type of stage is often used for concerts, not just theater. Here's two examples of when it was used on Broadway. One, we see Sunday in a Park with George, and over here,